two by six. The other day I was looking online, I came across a cookbook holder and I thought, that's kind of cool. I like the contrast and look to that. Wait, how much money is it? How expensive are cookbook holders nowadays? Wait, uh, they're all the same thing. They're the exact same item. Why are they so expensive? Oh, that's why. Oh, okay. Well, I got a two by six, so let me see what I can do. Based off the pictures, I can get a pretty good sense of the size of this thing. It looks like it's just made out of pine and a couple pieces of oak, so that's not a big deal. Now, construction lumber is usually pretty wonky, so I know I'm gonna have to do a little bit of cleanup work and plane them and make sure the board is flat and everything. And I'm gonna glue them together because, you know, a two by six isn't gonna be wide enough for this. But fortunately, I don't really need a whole lot of material for this either. I think I'll keep my boards a little bit on the thick side, at least while I'm doing the glue up, because I can always plane them down to the actual size I want later on. The book holder has a giant dovetail that goes all the way across the face. So I'm over at the table saw. I'm gonna cut a channel out to remove as much of the material as possible. Then I'll go over to the router table, put a dovetail bit in, and then cut out the profile. I'm just gonna eyeball the dimensions based off the pictures that I'm seeing. And honestly, this isn't super precise craftsmanship woodworking anyway. And that's not a knock on this project at all. It's to say that this is a more of a rustic project compared to something that is clean, ultra modern, where all the little details matter. When you make something that's rustic, it's not gonna be as precise. And that's okay, that's what people are looking for in this type of item. Dovetail is in, not looking too bad. Now I need a stand, otherwise this is just gonna stand there like this. So I've got another board here. What I need to do is cut a bevel on this so that it will mate onto the back of that. And then I need to cut bevels on the bottoms of both of these. So that whenever you splay them apart, it'll actually you know, sit flat on your counter. So I gotta go over to the table saw, figure out what angle I need, then cut my bevels, then figure out how do I actually attach this. I was looking at how the stand attaches to the back and really it's just a couple hinges, nothing fancy here. So I'm gonna use these cheap hinges that I picked up. I'm gonna use two screws, leave out the middle one. Essentially they attach this thing the same way you would if you're gonna assemble a Lazy Susan, using a hole to turn the screws. I'm gonna mark a hole location and then go over to the drill press and drill out this hole oversized. I'm gonna line this up how I want it and then make a dimple so I know where to drill out my pilot holes. The lip is just a couple pieces of pine, so I found an off cut that I could make these out of. Now I'm gonna glue them together. Now I was looking at the picture, it looks like that they just use some nails or something and then fill them in, but eh, I think I'll just wait for the glue to dry, it's all good. To get an idea of how deep this lip is, actually I looked up the books that were in the pictures, see how thick the books were, and that gave me a relative idea. Essentially, all these boards are just painted different colors. Now, I don't really do a whole lot of painting. I don't have a lot of paint in the shop, but I do have a lot of dyes and stains. So I've got some black stain here. I'm gonna stain the main board. The other ones, I'm gonna use some Osmo. I'll probably apply a couple coats of stain to this. Just kind of depends on how well it's soaking in. The good thing is it's water-based, so it's gonna dry really fast. Once it dries, I'll throw a water-based finished top coat on it.
Okay, now that the whole thing is done, what was the damage? Well, rough estimate based off the prices that I paid, a four foot long two by six cost me $4.22. Piece of oak, well, free, because I used an offcut, but if you were to go to a big box store and pay retail price, about two bucks. Hinges cost me less than $3. Paint, well, you don't need a lot, just a little can of paint works. It's about $5 at the store and then some screws. So a box of screws costs a little over $5. You only need a couple screws though, really. That means I paid less than $20, including taxes, which isn't too bad. Now I know you have to have tools to make something, but you also don't have to make it the same way that I did or use the tools that I used. This was a fun little exercise though, because there are a lot of times that making an item isn't really cheaper than it is just to buy it in the store. And based off what I'm seeing here, I could sell this for easily $1,000 Oprah puts it back in her magazine. So until we meet again, get in your shop and build something awesome.